What's up everybody, I'm Thomas, and today I'm going to be doing a little walkthrough on the install of my Coastal Off-Roads uh, bumper for my 2019 4Runner. So I've seen a couple of these on YouTube, but I haven't seen one for the 5th Gen 4Runners. So I'm going to be giving a little bit more information on that. So I found the kit on Craigslist actually for, it was listed at $800, I offered the guy $500, he accepted it. On their website, the same kit sells for, I think, close to 900, and that comes with the four pod lights and wiring harness. And it's a weld-it-yourself kit. So what I did is I went on a Craigslist gigs, and I said looking for a welder, and found a pretty cool dude in a city about 30 minutes away from mine. I live in Reno, Nevada. He lives in Carson City. So went down there and had him weld the bumper up for me. We're friends now. He actually has a video on that that if he finishes that, I'll make sure to link it uh, somewhere here in the, the YouTube window. But when I was driving back from Carson City one night, it decided to snow on me. So if you've ever had steel get wet, you know exactly what happened. So the next day I woke up and it was covered in rust. So originally I was gonna paint it with some rattle can bed liner, but I opted to go the sandblasting and powder coating route. So once I get that, back I will update you guys and show you how I wired the lights on it and how to install the winch. So although my buddy's gonna have a video on uh, the main bumper install I will give you a quick rundown on what was required. Um, first thing was first we taped following this body line all the way across hit it with an angle grinder and then just ripped the bumper off. There were a bunch of points. You do have to unattach it from a fender liner that's no longer there. There's also a large section here that bolts in. You want to make sure to hang on to those bolts because that is how you will mount the new bumper. The grill section here from underneath originally hung on to it, but the bumper does sit about half an inch underneath it, so you really don't need it. We also took the fender liners. They were down probably around here, cut them up with a Dremel. And you do have to do some cutting into your body here. There's a slight notch that you have to do. If you can see this section here, the top cut sits kind of flush with that body line. And this black piece here also needs to be trimmed straight from that body line. That is just to hold this little section under your headlight housing in place. So here's a video of what it's looking like from the outside without the bumper installed, but you can see that I do have the wiring harness all wired up and ready for the fog lights at least. And that install is pretty simple. You will get a relay. That relay will go into one of the multiple ground holes on the side of your engine bay. The hole in the relay actually wasn't big enough, so I had to drill it out. Um, positive goes to positive terminal, negative goes to negative terminal, and it's all just kind of zip tied to stay out of the way for now. There is a switch that hooks up to the relay that'll run straight back through this grommet. I have to cut a hole in there. And that ends up coming out down under here, right in this area right up here. And so once you pull the switch there, it's basically just pulling on this panel. And you can take any of the blank switch spots. This one is where I actually wired it into. And you just push on the tabs and that switch will come out the front here. So I pulled everything out just so you can get a bit of a better view. The switch that comes with the wiring harness, I actually clipped which was these uh, white blue and black wires and you strip those down so they're all exposed and then this is about a 13 dollars switch you can find it on uh, amazon or ebay and these little heat shrinks also came from amazon about 10 bucks they have some solder in the middle so when you hit them uh, it'll tie everything together real nice but the black wire goes to the black wire the red wire goes to the white wire and the green wire goes to the blue wire and originally I had wired these two backwards, which is actually how the wiring diagram they had given me uh, looked, but it meant that this light here was always powered on. So if that's the case, just try flipping these two. Uh, one of them connects to your relay, one of them connects to your live positive wire. 
And then there's also this yellow wire, the wiring diagram on Amazon lists it as red two. This wire you take and you can tap it into, this is my windshield wiper defroster, and you can tap it into the green wire. And same thing, these little T-splitters I got from Amazon. But that means that when your car is on, I'll go ahead and turn it on real quick. But when your car is on, that light will be illuminated without having your lights turned on. So if I turn on my headlights, you'll see that that light's now on. You do have to be careful because these wires here, here are pretty weak. When I was pulling it out, there was not a lot of give and I ended up severing a wire back here, back in that area and having to rip the entire dash apart, take off everything back here and go and splice that back together. But after that's all done, it, you can tuck everything up nicely. I plugged in some pods earlier to test it out and it all works currently. And now I'm just waiting on the bumper and we'll continue the video when the winch is here as well. So just got the bumper back from being powder coated and I also got the winch now. I'm hoping to make the install of this portion a little bit better than the prior. The prior installations were a bit more of an afterthought, so I'm hoping to go a little bit more in depth with the winch install and the rest of mounting this up. So with that being said, let's get to it. So I've got the bumper, I've got the winch, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, anything that you'll need to access from the back of the bumper, you're gonna wanna go ahead and install. So I'm gonna get the, the winch in, all the lighting tabs and the lights in, and the license plate as well. So quick note, the winch comes installed with these brackets. These are meant for mounting it directly over the center of the winch. I'm gonna opt to mount it over here on the side. So we install these other brackets that come with it. And that's because it looks like we may have some interference here with this metal bar. I don't wanna run into that. Uh, there's also this power steering line that I'm a bit worried about. So we're gonna have to try to bend that a little bit later. So back to it. So the hardware will come with these two little black screws. That's what's gonna be used to mount this onto the actual winch itself, the solenoid. Oh, whoops. But unfortunately, we're gonna have to get a pretty long head to get down under there and lock this into place. So since a good chunk of the rest of the video is time lapse, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of voiceover. First, I wanted to apologize because I was having problems recording a lot of this. There were some iCloud issues, so I was running out of storage, so the ending, the mounting of the bumper, I didn't actually manage to catch on video. I was also having issues with the HDR on the iPhone, and so most of the footage was blown out, but I have managed to recover it to a kind of reasonable amount. So the wiring for the winch is pretty easy. Uh, a goes to A, B goes to B, C goes to C, D goes to D, and all of the colors line up. All right, so we're gonna spool the lineup now just so it's out of the way when we install it. It will require a thousand pound load, so I'm gonna need to pre-tension it, which I will show you how to do at the end of the video. But for now, we're gonna stick the line in here and then just free spool it onto the winch so that it's out of the way. So at this point, I realized that you're actually going to have to run the line through the fair lead before you spool the line up. Otherwise, the hook is too big to make it through the fair lead. So after winding all of this up and uh, hooking up to the battery to test, I had to unwind it and rewind it again later on. Also for the winch, I went with the Smittybilt X20 Comp winch. It is a synthetic rope winch. It's uh, 10,000 pounds. For this bumper, anything between 8 and 12,000 pounds will generally fit. I just managed to get a good deal on this winch and I like the fact that it is synthetic. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is get the fair lead installed and all the light mounts installed. Now, I did mention earlier that I am going to have to pre-tension the winch. I did that shortly after, which you will see. That just means that you have a load on the winch to get all of the slack out of the line when you're spooling it up. This winch is also self-lubricating, so I believe it recommends uh, once per month to spool it out and in completely to uh, have it self-lubricate. Also, you can see at this point that the tolerancing for the fair lead holes was pretty tight, so I did have to end up taking a drill and just start shaving the sides off until I could get the bolts through the fair lead uh, holes there. Eventually, I did manage to do that.
All right, now with the fair leads in, which was a lot bigger of a than I expected, we're gonna put the light mounts in. So mounting the lights was pretty easy, but I did manage to break a couple of the clips just moving the bumper around. Fortunately, that's nothing a little Gorilla Tape can't fix. All right, lights are installed, fair leads installed. This is what it looks like from the front. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount the winch. So here you can see me start to mount the winch. I had a lot of problems with this just because when I welded the bumper together, the plates underneath to reach the bolts underneath the winch didn't line up exactly. So getting a ratchet in there took a little bit of finesse. So eventually I did manage to get everything mounted up, but this thing was really heavy. So I had two others help me hold it up while I just got two of the screws threaded, and after that the rest was pretty easy. You just want to make sure not to pinch any wires when you're pushing it back up against the truck. Now this is just a quick view of the wiring for the winch, I just ran it up along the radiator and positive, positive, negative, and negative, and it looks pretty mean all said and done. So here's where we went out to actually pre-tension the winch. I uh, put the forerunner on a slight decline, and I didn't have a tree saver at the time, so I just wrapped the tow rope a couple times around a tree and made sure to get all the slack out. Here we are winching it around 30 seconds at a time, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, just to make sure we don't draw too much power from our battery. You also want to make sure to be pretty careful here, there's a lot that can go wrong when winching. Here's a little closer look of what it looks like strapped to the tree. I've just got that toe strap around there and a D-ring shackle at the end of it. But as I was saying before, you do want to be careful when you're winching. You can get fingers caught, you can have a line snap. Uh, I've got gloves on, which just makes it a little easier because I'm pulling the rope to aim it when spooling the winch in. So that is going to wrap the video up. I am going to give a quick cost breakdown real quick. The bumper kit itself was $500, welding it was $500, and powder coating it and miscellaneous parts was around $300. So we'll say 2300 Now when you compare that to other pre-made bumpers, pre-powder coated, pre-fab, it is going to come in a lot cheaper. But trust me when I say what you don't pay in money, you are going to pay in labor. This thing was a b to install. Now I am going to tell you a few things about the bumper I don't like, but before I do that, let me show you the view I have right now. So this is a bit of a moderate trail to get up to, uh, in a lot rougher shape because of all of the rain and snow from the winter, but you get a nice view of the city from up on this trail.
But anywho, so first of all, this washer fluid bucket here is pretty exposed. It's open in debris, it could get hit by a rock, it could get hit by a lot of things. There's kind of two options. You could either fabricate some armor for it and have it kind of wrap around that. Or what I'm going to do, I have a relocation kit that's gonna move this washer bottle up into my engine bay. So it'll be a lot more protected. Next, if I were to redo this again, I'd probably come back here and hit the parts that are bare metal and gray with some black paint just to help hide it better. There's also these holes back here. When you're welding it, you wanna make sure that that lines up to where the winch mounts on or you're gonna have a of a time mounting it like I did. Now, if the bumper ever comes off, I'll probably go back and get that with some spray paint, like I said, but for now, I don't have a crane and it's a really big pain to take it off, so it's gonna stay on. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond to them as best as I can. And stay tuned for more videos. I am gonna have that washer reservoir relocation kit install coming soon. I also have a rooftop tent on the way that I'll be installing and reviewing. And as soon as that is up, I hope to have a lot more overlanding content on the channel as well.